Uh, as you have been told, today is day six, uh, a day of, of uh, uh, discussing or get to know all about the map in DHS2. So uh, it's good that uh, you, you know the content or the objective of this session uh, before we start explaining uh, what the all out the map all about in DHS2 and the way how you can navigate uh, the map in DHS2. Uh, here, <clears throat> here are the objectives uh, that um, before the end of the session or at the end of this session, uh, hoping that uh, every one of you should be able to navigate uh, the maps up within the DHS2 interface, uh, but also learn uh, different layers that are there in the map, be able to add the thematic layer, we get to know what are the thematic layer and the layer in general, uh, but also uh, interpret uh, a map region. I know this keyword region is not new to you. Uh, you have been doing it or you have been using Legend uh, from other analytical uh, tools within DHS to like pivot table and uh, probably the data visualizer. And also uh, how to use other layers uh, like a boundary and the facility layer uh, in, uh, in the map application. Uh, but also um, um, we know um, we are, we know the how region works, but also we have other uh, customize the region and uh, the way how you can add them to the uh, to the map and be able to interpret the data uh, with the uh, region applied. Uh, but also another um, way of uh, probably uh, be able to uh, to know the data that is, is, is uh, causing the map to display, uh, which we can be able to see them through the data table. And also we have another feature for, for those that you are using the DHS tool uh, that is starting from uh, 30, uh, uh, 35 going up, uh, the way how you can split them, uh, see the map in a splitted view, but timeline, but also uh, be able to know this, um, uh, uh, the type of uh, category of uh, thematic map, like the color place and the, the bubble, uh, the bubble maps. So uh, <clears throat> to start, uh, this map actually uh, introduction come from the uh, previously we have been using the GIS for those who have been using the old DHS2, which uh, stands for the uh, Geographic Information System actually to, uh, to display or to, to explain the JS, this is the very big, uh, the big topic that it consists of a lot, but uh, specifically uh, uh, for, the, uh, for, the, uh, for the map, we'll be looking for the uh, uh, thematic mapping, uh, where we'll be able to, to know how uh, we portray the geographical pattern of the subject, of the subject matter of the geographical area. Uh, 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 within uh, uh, within a map, so how you can uh, probably be able to display some of the data, the data value for a given uh, geographic area uh, within the uh, within the map. So uh, to be precise on that, uh, we'll be looking actually for uh, categories of the thematic mapping uh, that I can call it, uh, where we'll be looking on the. Uh, 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 the color place where this is actually be able to categorize uh, the, the data in terms of color, uh, like showing which uh, area, geographic area, which probably uh, depending with the indicator that you are, uh, you are displaying, uh, which is uh, performing good and uh, uh, which is not performing depending with the indicator, but also uh, will be also be able to see uh, what I can call the uh, proportional as a symbol point, like uh, a, a point that you will be able to kind of uh, display uh, a, a value, uh, uh, yeah, evaluating a map to the specific point. Uh, that this one we cannot actually somehow like showing you uh, the color range, but you show you the uh, like giving you the magnitude, like uh, the magnitude of the data to the specific point that, that can be like a facility or to any uh, of the catchment uh, area. So uh, of course in the map application, uh, this uh, allows you to kind of create the thematic map of the areas and the point as I said, 
uh, the thematic map of the areas that it, uh, I said, just showing you the, uh, the coverage in terms of the color ranges uh, from one allocation to another, but also uh, uh, showing you, uh, but uh, be able also to kind of uh, be able to, uh, to display information uh, in, a, in a particular point, like a facilities, like to know the magnitude uh, of the data to the particular uh, particular point. But also, we can also help you to know the distribution of the facilities within a given uh, reporting highlight or within the given organization unit. So uh, with this application specific, you will be able to see uh, uh, all of that. But also, uh, be able to know uh, the underlying data that is associated with the map, but because you can see like an image being uh, displayed, uh, which is called a map, but you also uh, we need to know that what are the data uh, that lead to the uh, display of that map, where we'll be looking on the data tables and the things like that. But you also uh, not limited the map uh, application, can you give the flexibility of downloading the offline uh, the offline data that if you have, if you want to kind of uh, download the data and be able maybe to embed into a certain presentation or a certain report, uh, we'll be seeing uh, those kind of uh, uh, functionality. But also, uh, if it happened, maybe you are good in using other external uh, JS tool like QJS and uh, and probably other, you can be able to download the the data and be able to upload it to other external. Um, uh, external external tools uh, as i said like the uh the the qjs but uh <clears throat> what the usefulness of the uh, of the maps as i said uh, but also this uh depends with the way how you uh, you, you defend or the way how you want to uh, to make it but in simply this actually gives you uh, provide the special presentation of the data that you can be able to present the data uh, in in uh, in using the uh, special statistics like uh, putting them uh, in a map, like I said, in thematic and a thematic map can be that thematic map uh, of uh, the problem, like showing the colors, showing the magnitude, like where the problem is, or if it's a performance, showing uh, those colors will actually help you to uh, to identify which location actually performs good and and uh, things like that. But also apart uh, not from that, but see some will make uh, data tangible to the end user. For example, if you have a, a good uh, drone map and uh, showing the good performance uh, of the certain indicator and uh, put it to the certain, a certain report maybe for the presentation or whatever you want to share that kind of data. Yeah, you, the user can feel it. He can see that uh, there is actual performance that is being done to the specific, uh, to the specific location. But also uh, maps as other, uh, other visualization as you have seen like the pivot table and the data visualizer uh, it's also a fantastic way of showing of sharing uh, the data to the uh, decision makers because some of the some others stakeholders or those uh, who are making a decision they actually make decision by actually looking at the uh, the color codes uh, or the way how the map was presenting the data or even uh, uh, the underlying of the data that is displaying the, uh, those information. So uh, like the other tools that you have seen, like the data visualizer and the map and the, 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 the pivot table, uh, the, also the map actually helps uh, those decision maker to, uh, to be able to, uh, to make a decision based with the display that uh, has, been, uh, uh, has been done on the, on the map, on that map application. Uh, but also, <clears throat> will you be able to see, because uh, we have seen that in another session, uh, will you be able to actually uh, learn on how we can use this customized region to actually be able to show uh, you the how the indicator performs. So with that one also, if the indicator, if your indicator yeah, that you are analyzing is a performing indicator with the region, the customized region that set, you can be able to see those area who are actually uh, performing good and those area who are actually underperforming. So uh, what are the layering in maps? As uh, you can see that in maps, you can see a certain object that is being displayed in a map, but mind you, there are different layers that actually are being built on top of it to make that map look the way 
it is. So, uh, for example, here we have a couple of uh, layer. Uh, for example, we have a layer which can be used to show like the road within a certain location, but the land use, but the boundaries that is showing the boundary between one uh, one location with another location, uh, but also the hydrograph and and the force and so forth and so forth. But uh, in in this particular application, the DHS two maps, uh, there are uh, some layer that will be uh, looking at them. Uh, for example, we'll be looking for the facility uh, that someone showed me the facility distribution. For example, can use it to show the facility distribution uh, of a certain uh, 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 location that can be a district or can it be within the region or can it be within the entire entire organization uh, unit or entire the country. But also, you can uh, we can use some of the layers uh, to actually uh, show the shape, like show the boundary between one uh, like one district with another district and the one region with another uh, with another region. So uh, in that way, uh, we'll be able to uh, see uh, those layers that I have just mentioned, and they probably uh, will be able to see some of the features that's associated with those uh, with those layers. So this is the way uh, the overview uh, of the map application uh, when you open it in the DHS2. This is the way how it looks when you open it. Uh, actually, it's being um, divided. I can call it into uh, into three segments. Uh, we have the upper one, and we have the left and the, the right. Uh, so, uh, for example, uh, if you want to kind of uh, add some them uh, some thematic layers, uh, the layer that I've been talking, you have the button or the option where you can be able to add those the layers. Uh, but also, we have another menu like a file uh, download and I know this is not new to you for example the file it's the same as uh, for other analytical tool that you have been using like the pivot table and the data visualizer where you can be able to save your favorite report for example if you if at all you want to reference it in the future uh, this is where you can be able to get uh, the uh, uh, the link or the option uh, to kind of uh, uh, save your report but also uh, if you wanted to, to share that uh, the map that you have uh, you, you have drawn uh, using the map application, uh, that's the place where you can be able to do all of that. And but also you want if you wanted to open other existing map, for example, uh, it might happen that you created a report and the, uh, which is a map which is coming from the map application that you wanted to open it. Uh, this is where you can go and then you see. Uh, uh, a menu where you can open the previous uh, previous report. Uh, another menu, uh, it's uh, like a download. This is actually doing the similar uh, the similar thing like other analytical tools is doing. Uh, this is actually we will be able to actually get out that map out of the system. So if you want to download the map and then use it offline, and maybe use it to other uh, to other tool like the document and whatever. This uh, where you will be able to. Uh, to go and be able to download it. But also we have other, uh, what we call the BABS map layer. This is actually like a supporting layer. Uh, for example, you might be analyzing the data, but you want it to be supported with this uh, uh, base map, what we call a BABS map layer, which is coming from uh, uh, external sources like your SM light, but you can see also using the uh, OCM detail. These are the base map layer, like the supporting one. So we we'll actually be using uh, them, uh, but you can decide not to use them until you need it to, to use. So actually for now, the DHS2 is providing uh, six of them, but you can be able to upload other external layer if actually you do. Uh, but that is uh, somehow another way of uh, of, of 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 showing the way how you can uh, be able to upload other external layers. So we might not be able with the given time. We might not be able to cover that the way how you can uh, upload the other external layer. But with the given layer that are there, you can also uh, get your map uh, drawn nicely and be able to uh, to use them. So uh, these are the base map that uh, I was actually talking uh, that uh, they are now currently being supported uh, by the DHS two maps, but uh, you, uh, the DHS2 map uh, is not just limiting to those base map layer that has been supported. They are giving you other flexibility of uploading your external layer if at all you have other external layer like the Google, uh, the Google map layer and uh, things like that. So 
will be able to uh, to see that. So, <clears throat> in this particular uh, particular session that we are having, uh, these are, are the layers that we'll be focusing on. So, mind you that uh, when adding the layer, uh, these are actually the uh, different layer are there. So we have quite uh, other other layer that are there, but uh, we will be focusing on three layers, like uh, the boundary layer, this one here, and then the facility layer and the thematic layer. We have this other Google layer, um, Google Earth Engine layer, where this one actually, uh, they are, when you are installing the DHS dot the first time, they are actually not being supported uh, immediately. There are some configuration that you need to do. Uh, so your administrator or the one who is setting up the instance, uh, he, uh, there are a couple of procedure where it's also documented in the DHS2 manual where uh, he, he needs actually to, to configure so that to be to support this other external uh, external layer like to know the population density but this also is based on the global uh, the global population of that uh, of the country so uh, this one uh, needs to be configured at the, at the first place you also you can't use it if it's not uh, configured uh, at, at at first time. So um, with the thematic uh, map that being drawn, this will be like an example uh, of the map when it will be actually uh, be able to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to create or to, to create this map. So this was showing one of the thematic map that has been drawn based on the API, um, API Mesos Rubera 1 coverage. And these were the the region, as you can see here, uh, this is actually the region that uh, actually describe or categorize uh, the ranges that uh, for those uh, with the, a certain color, uh, starting from which range to uh, uh, what, or what range. So these are uh, the, the, the region that will be able to, to see because uh, in this map, we, we have what we call the automatic region and what is called the customized region where of like, for example, if you want to, to, to create you the uh, automatic, no, the, the custom region, you actually need to review your data and be able to, to, to range them, to group them, that uh, this range, this will be considered for the performing, and this range will be considered maybe for the moderate, and this will be considered, considered maybe for the, uh, for the lower performing and the so forth and so forth, things, something like that. So uh, we will be able to actually uh, touch on that and see how you can, you can be able to generate this kind of map, do analysis on this, uh, on this map, and also play with the other features that uh, are there in the map application. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> playing with the data table, like you have seen that you can have the map being drawn, but uh, without knowing uh, the exact figure of that location. So there's a feature of the data table uh, where it actually, if you want to know the, the value of a specific, uh, of a specific location of the specific organization unit, you can be able uh, to, uh, to know them by going to the feature called the data table. It's also embedded uh, in, the, uh, in the map application uh, where you will be able to kind of, uh, we also get a time to play with it to know how you can filter, how you can, uh, you can be able to sort and be able to find maybe a value for a specific uh, organization unit or for the specific location and, uh, and the things like that. But also how you can also be able to download it uh, from the uh, from the from the map application to uh, to your offline maybe to your computer or to somewhere else, so we'll be able to uh, to see uh, to see all of that. But uh, again, uh, why are we? Uh, what why why do we want to use a map? Mm -hmm. Because it's not necessary that uh, everything that you do you have to to, to use a map. Actually, you need to uh, kind of consider some few things like. Uh, what actually will make you that if you put map will make the audience uh, or the people that you are presenting those information be interested. So you need to consider that, uh, that uh, when you are actually a, a, a preparing this kind of uh, visualization, whether you are using the pivot table or the data visualizer or even the map, your audience should be your key concern that uh, like this kind of indicator blending into this type of visualization that I'm using, but also uh, that type, the type of data on the, uh, and the purpose of the data, because 
Uh, it's not necessary that every data that uh, every indicator that you wanted to analyze, you should you should you should use map or you should use data visualizer or probably you should uh, use the pivot. So it depends with the audience. Uh, if you think that putting the this indicator to the map will make the audience understand it quickly, understand it better, you can do it. So that should be your key consideration that uh, when you're using this uh, applications, analytical tool application that you have been going through, uh, this uh, almost the, through the, the, the whole week, uh, what should be considered uh, to, uh, to, to kind of use uh, whatever type of analytical tool that, uh, that you are using. Okay, and uh, considering that those facts that I've said that when you are actually using this uh, uh, analytical uh, tool, uh, uh, what thing that you should consider? There are a couple of questions that you can be asking yourself before using one of these uh, analytical type. Uh, that, for example, if you're using map that you have, uh, can the map help you communicate more effective that if I'm presenting a certain information uh, to the map, uh, with the audience or with the people that I'm presenting with the data, be able to uh, to to understand uh, what you actually uh, meant that to be to be to be communicated to them. But also make sure that uh, that 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 can be a question when you are considering using this uh, analytical analytical tool. That but if find that an indicator you are probably wanted to uh, you wanted to visualize or you want to present. Um, blending good, uh, blending in fine with the pivot table, you can just allow selecting uh, use the pivot table instead of the map and things like that. Because sometimes you can be given some hard questions to explain uh, something that you have presented on the map. So you need to consider all of that before using this, uh, this analytical, analytical tool. So, but another thing, uh, what are some key design consideration for, uh, uh, for, for this map? Uh, when you are using this map, you need to think all of those. Uh, that when I'm presenting this data, uh, what will the, the what will the purpose of designing this map for? Uh, that this indicator that I wanted to present to uh, using this kind of uh, 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 map uh, works fine, uh, or maybe it will be understandable to the people that I wanted to present it, or I can just use other of the analytical uh, analytical uh, analytical tool that. Uh, we have also uh, learned from the uh, from the from the DHS. So uh, this is just a quick uh, a quick theory on the map. But rather after that, I think I will just jump into the demonstration on how we can now start playing with the uh, with the with the map application the DHS. That's as I said in the beginning that uh, before uh, or after the end of this session. You should also be able to to meet these objectives here. That the way how you can navigate to the map application map using the DHS tool, but how to add these different layers, that thematic here, a thematic layer, whatever, and then uh, be able to uh, to do some kind of sort of analysis uh, on it. So, uh, and a question before I, I just go to the uh, to the demonstration. So I just uh, stop my sharing and uh, share also. An instance. Let me know if you can see my screen as well. Can you see my screen? Okay. Yes. Okay, great. So uh, this is the demo instance that I'll be using to demonstrate uh, uh, the map, uh, the map application with the DHS tool. So I will have to, to actually log in. So uh, let, let me 
let me go to the I know uh, most of you will be after logging to the DHS2, you're actually being uh, taken to the dashboard. So uh, one of the the way how to access the map, uh, we know that we have a, a place where we have all of the modules that actually uh, make the DHS2 at large. Uh, this is the place uh, in a, uh, in the search app where you can be able to to find your your map application. So we have some couple of ways how you can find it. The first way you can, uh, you can search uh, through this search bar uh, called search app. So you can search by typing the keyword map or other can use another way of scrolling until they get to the map application, which is actually right here. So I will use one of the, uh, of the easiest way of uh, uh, finding the application in the DHS2, which is uh, searching and then it be able to uh, to click or to be able to, uh, to to open the map application. As you can see, all um, this is the one of the this is the interface of the map application. Uh, as I said, that it has a different um, uh, it has a different uh, uh, segment. Uh, we have uh, like what I said, like three: the top, uh, the left, and the right, uh, and. Uh, what I do, uh, one thing I, I want to show you, uh, for example, if you wanted to open uh, the existing report, for example, if you want to open an existing map that has been drawn so that uh, you can see. So to be to do that, actually, uh, you need to go uh, to the file and uh, I will search one of the map, maybe called uh, TB, and maybe TB uh, notified the case for new and the relapse. Uh, just to click it. Uh, as you can see, if you click the existing uh, uh, the existing map, uh, this will be opened. And then, uh, as you can see, uh, we have at the left uh, panel we have this what we call the region. As you can see, it's giving the name of the indicator uh, for a given uh, period and then be able to categorize them. As you can see, we have this color difference or color, uh, uh, color, color ranges uh, from the one with the somehow darkest and the, to the lighter one. So we'll be able to see the way how uh, this is being generated. Uh, but also apart from that, uh, we have this, uh, what you call a title. This actual title uh, is being uh, produced when you are saving this map as you one of your favorite, uh, as one of your favorite report. So when you are saving it, for example, uh, when you are saving it here, uh, actually this title uh, will be will come here automatically once you have uh, you have saved. So uh, before saving it, uh, you won't be able to put uh, some title, but after saving it. Uh, that's where the title uh, will come. So uh, because uh, the name of your favorite report also act as the title, I think you need to put uh, the good uh, descriptive title so that everyone can understand what was your objective of uh, having that map. But also other base layer that I was uh, talking about, this one here, and which we actually are supporting six of them. So uh, we have this... Um, uh, like OSM light, you have uh, the detailed one, and you have uh, the Bing load, and the Bing dark, and the different uh, business. So these are actually a kind of supporting, for example, uh, which I can be able to switch uh, whatever a supporting map that I want to appear at the background, uh, the background map. But also mind you that if you are actually working offline, uh, this supporting map might not be able to uh, to, to load, but because they're actually being pulled from the online. So you need to be uh, to be connected uh, so as you can be able to use uh, to use uh, this baseline map. So I'm talking for those actually who are actually using the DHS2 uh, totally offline, like if they have installed DHS2 in their laptop, on their desktop, and they actually wanted to, uh, to, uh, to play with the map. So this one is actually uh, being supported when you are uh, you are connected to the internet. So if you are not connected to the internet, you still be able to, to draw some map, uh, but you not you not be able to get this baseline uh, uh, the base map that are here. But also as I said, if you have other external map, you can be able to upload other external uh, external base map. But this also is another session that 
uh, it's probably uh, being alleged in another way on the other academy, but uh, uh, for the today session, uh, let's cover what is existing on the, on the map, uh, map application. So another thing that I would like to, to know, uh, for you to, to, to know, for example, if you want uh, to kind of uh, edit uh, what is existing uh, on, this, uh, on this map, uh, we have this uh, layer which actually portrays what has been displayed here. So if at all you needed to do some editing uh, to this uh, to this layer here, uh, you need to come to this icon here called edit. So for example, if I wanted to change, uh, for example, uh, the org unit, for example, here I was showing for the entire uh, entire organization unit or the entire country, and they probably I wanted to switch to a certain specific here. Uh, a certain specific maybe uh, organization unit. I can just remove this user uh, org unit and then maybe I want to show maybe for the, uh, let's say for the uh, animal and then maybe showing by district. So this is how the work can edit and then uh, be able to, to draw the map uh, map like this one. So this is how the way you can still uh, uh, navigate uh, through, uh, through uh, be able to to edit what is the map that is existing that has been uh, has been uh, has been drawn. So uh, let's jump to uh, one of the other example. For example, uh, what if at all uh, I want to, uh, to 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 add like to create the uh, the new map from the uh, from the the beginning. So uh, essential question that I would like you to ask is that how do I add a layer? So for example, uh, let me start a new, uh, let me remove it, uh, start a new one. So this actually, uh, the interface of the map when it's opened by, for the first time. And uh, uh, the first thing that you need to know is that how to add the area. And probably you need to come here uh, uh, to this menu here called add layer. So clicking here, you'll be able to see different layer that uh, I just explained when I was uh, going through the, the presentation uh, that we have different layer, but uh, our focus here will be for the three layers that uh, we said. Uh, we have this one for the uh, showing the, the boundary, uh, showing the organization unit, uh, the bound of the organization unit between maybe one district and another district or between one region and the another region. And then you have uh, this layer called the uh, facility layer that can help us to show uh, the distribution of the facility within a given location, but also uh, can help us uh, yeah, to kind of be able to know the facility, different uh, type of the facility within a given, a given location. Uh, but uh, another layer which is very important for this one that we'll be using most of the time is the thematic, uh, thematic layer, which uh, actually helps you or enough, uh, helps you to kind of be able to analyze data uh, analyze data uh, to the map uh, application and be able to categorize them uh, depending on the way how you want. If you want to categorize them in terms of uh, in terms of color difference, the performing and not the performing. So this is the layer that uh, we'll be using. We have also other different layer that, as I just said, for example, we have uh, for this one, for the tracker one, uh, for those uh, who are dealing with the uh, individual information, but you have this one, which is Google, uh, Google layer, uh, but it needs some uh, some kind of configuration uh, to support them. So uh, to start with the, um, I can uh, start with the boundary layer, for example, uh, because as I said, this actually showing the boundary, so it, it's just involved the organization unit. So I can select for the uh, the whole. Uh, country and then be able to show the boundaries uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the the, the district. So uh, after selecting the organization unit, I need to select the level. The different way you can do that one is selecting the level that I want to show the district for the entire country. But other can use the longest way of taking one district after the another. But that is the most tedious. But if you want to do that, you are not limited. You can still do that. And then once done, uh, you can you can add the layer. So as you can see, just uh, used a few clicks or a few steps to get the uh, the map uh, map created. Uh, but also uh, 
what if you want to uh, to add the data or on top of it uh, which layer uh, you should use for example let me take maybe i wanted to uh, to one to add one of the uh, one of the the data uh, on top of that uh, on that map so how how should i do for example it's just need to go to uh, layer here and i will select this thematic uh, thematic layer here and uh, let's say i wanted to uh, uh, to see a uh, HIV test performed. Uh, I want to see the data for the HIV test performed. So, so first you need to know that where that HIV test performed is being found, actually that an indicator and uh, found in the data element. And then I'll just go to one of the group uh, called the HIV. So for this group called the HIV, we know uh, we have, we'll be looking for the total and not for the detailed one. We see how later if you want to see for the detailed one, how, how do you do? Uh, but also um, be able uh, to select the specific uh, variables that I, I just said, like I want to know the HIV test, uh, test performed. So I can just go through and define uh, the variable called uh, HIV test performed, which is one here. And then yeah, I want to check maybe for the uh, probably last six months. Yeah? Let me check uh, for the last uh, six months, where do I find it? Yeah, find it here, last six months. And here we have a different uh, display period. Um, if you want to, uh, to, to combine all in one, all of the period uh, and aggregate all the data to get the sum for the last three, uh, six months. And, but we also have other uh, map view, but don't worry, we'll be able to go one after another for, for, for this purpose, uh, for this, um, uh, for this uh, demonstration. Uh, let's start with the single aggregate, which means it's combining all the data for all of the uh, reporting period that you have selected and then aggregate them. Uh, and then uh, <clears throat> I will select, uh, for, for, for example, I wanted to check the data for the facility particularly. So for the facility for the entire entire country, and then uh, add it. So if I add, as you can see, I just uh, wanted to know the HIV test performed for the facility, for each of the facilities. So this one, uh, this node here, this uh, the, the, the data for the work for the facility. But as you can see, uh, we have uh, two different layers. One uh, was for the boundary layer that is showing the boundaries uh, of the district, but also have added another layer on top of it. So uh, another layer that I just added, uh, this is showing the uh, HIV uh, test performed uh, for the, in facility level for the again for the entire entire country. So you can see that uh, these are the other thematic uh, the category of thematic mapping that I just told you that we have to we have the the color plate that is showing the color within the location, but also other showing uh, the point uh, or showing the the magnitude of the of the value to the particular particular point or to the particular facility. So what's uh, actually is being shown uh, shown here is what we call uh, the proportional sign point that is showing the data or the value to the particular uh, to the particular point. We'll be able to know the difference between them, so don't worry. Uh, but as you can see, uh, we have given this kind of uh, map uh, that having two layer, but. Uh, you can still edit that layer uh, because uh, let's skip this filter. We'll be able to see how you can be able uh, to filter them later. Don't uh, But for example, if you want, want to add some, uh, uh, like if you wanted to change like the, 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 the color of the legend, if you wanted to change uh, whatever, if you want to use a predefined legend, you can. You need to go to the study where you can be able to uh, to to. Uh, to, to, to use those feature. So as you can see here, this is actually the automatic legend that is being generated uh, when you are uh, you are creating a map for the first time. Uh, so we have this one automatic uh, color being picked and uh, this is picked depending on the classes that you have uh, 
by default is five giving you five classes, but you can still be able to change the classes that of the color you want the data to be distributed. Uh, and this uh, one, the this one here is the color uh, which is automatically being set by default by DHS2, but we have given been given the flexibility of uh, specifying uh, which color that uh, you wanted to use uh, for that automatic uh, uh, legend that has been. Uh, has been uh, detected. But uh, the good thing that uh, the purpose that I brought you here, that you have this classification here. Mm -hmm. So we have this classification that the data has been displayed on quality classification. So we have two types of classification that you need to understand it very clear because uh, when you be using them, you need to know the consequence or you need to know um, where to use the echo interval and where to use uh, the echo count. So what is the difference between these two? It's something that you need to listen carefully. So when we are, let's start with the uh, echo interval. When we are saying that we are distributing the data depending on the echo counts, and uh, that for example, uh, let's say uh, uh, you are having like, uh, uh, like maybe a thousand facilities. So if you want to distribute, the de to distribute data, uh, for those uh, 100, uh, no, 1,000 facilities, and you have selected to use the class of five. So each facility uh, data will be grouped to, uh, to, to 25 because it's taking thousands uh, and then it divided by, by five classes. So uh, each range, each range, each class here will be having uh, how many facilities. So that's how eco counts works. So if I total have like uh, 200, uh, for example, you have 200 facilities and then you have decided to use five classes, like here, one here, one, uh, the one is shown here, you need to take that 200 and then div divide by, uh, divide by uh, five, uh, divided by five classes that you have, uh, you have selected here. And then the range will be uh, distributed equal to each of the facilities. For example, here, uh, let me use equal count and update it, notice the change. If I click here, you will find that for each range, it's providing uh, 30, uh, 34. So it's actually taking uh, the total of the facility and then be able and then divide by the classes. So each of the range will be grouped according to the number of facilities. I don't know if I make that, uh, I make that clear. And uh, uh, as you can see, even the visualization has been has been changed. So uh, for each of the range, for each of the color, uh, for each of the color codes, or for the, each of the color that uh, in the range will be distributed equally to the number of uh, to the number of facilities. But if at all uh, you use uh, this uh, option of the equal interval. So the difference between equal interval to one of the equal count is that here it's distributed data. Uh, uh, it's distributed uh, data per, uh, per, per classes and not per facility. So for example, if we have the maximum value like uh, uh, 20, maybe 20K or 20,000, uh, and you have chosen to use five classes. So it will divide, uh, uh, divide that, that 20, data uh, 20,000 20, uh, to the number of classes. So each range within the, our region will be, uh, will be given to that, to, that, to that interval. So for example, if I click here, uh, not see from the previous to, to this one new here, uh, you will notice that uh, the range here is being distributed depending with the values and not the facility. But the one was being distributed depending with the what? Uh, with uh, with the facility. So uh, whatever, uh, whichever method that you have seen here, so when you are analyzing the data to the map, uh, you should be able uh, to know that which of the classification that, or when you're displaying data, which of the classification that uh, I, I should I should use. So uh, probably I, I stop here and I just give you like uh, five minutes or 10, uh, 20 minutes to, not just five minutes to actually be able to reproduce uh, of what uh, I just reproduced and uh, 
uh, share some issues. For example, uh, if you have uh, you have not understood a certain uh, a certain functionality of that. So I will stop and share one of the uh, one of the slide that, that showing you how to uh, uh, to to create this uh, to create this map. So uh, let me know if you can see my screen. No. Not yet. Can you see my screen? Yes. yes. What do you see? Add in a thematic layer, um, value type, data element, data element group, which I see, and just so on. Okay. okay, so uh, here is the, uh, is one that I want you to, uh, to, to do. Uh, first, uh, can I just uh, modify it here? Uh, no, my computer is stuck in anyway. So, uh, at the boundary left. Uh, showing uh, districts for the for the training land, and then uh, you need to add the thematic layer, having this detail. So uh, let me know if you are done, just give you uh, uh, two minutes. I'm starting counting. Please uh, make sure you, uh, you, you get to use uh, uh, those two classification. Just, I just explained the eco counts and the eco interval because I will have uh, some question to ask you uh, on that. <laughs> 